Hey guys, welcome to the channel or welcome back. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can use a cooler in the hottest conditions on a camping or overlanding trip and still have cold food and ice left over after five days in the hot desert sun. I'm also going to talk about why I still use a cooler instead of an electric fridge on my camping setup. Let's get into the video. First of all, let me tell you, I'm not sponsored. None of these products were given to me to promote. All the opinions that you're gonna hear in this video about any of these products and these techniques are all my own opinion from the years of camping and overlanding that I've done on my own. So why am I making a video about coolers? I work at a large outdoor store that provides everything for the outdoors. It's a great store, you've all heard about it. I get people from all over the world that have heard about it when they come in. There's a lot of people that come in and they have questions about coolers. So one conversation I'll get into with people a lot, how are the best use a cooler on your camping and overlanding trip. I've had a lot of people and they're experienced campers, but they don't know a lot of these tricks. So I thought, you know what? I've had this conversation so many times in the store that I decided this time to make a video on this subject. Let me show you a few of the coolers that I own and the differences between them and why some coolers are a lot more expensive than others. Take a quick break from the video to ask you, give me a thumbs up, give me a like, hit that subscribe button if you haven't done it already. and. Leave a comment down below. That really helps grow the channel. Thank you very much. Let me just talk a little bit about coolers. I'll show you some of the coolers that I have here. A cooler can be a lot of things. This bucket here could be a cooler. This is not the cooler that my stuff cold for five days out on the trail. Throw the soda and beer in there. Throw some ice on top. It's, it's gonna work fine though for one day. And if that's all you need a cooler for, this could be all you need. It may not be everything you want, but it would work. Another cooler I have is a small one. I carry ice water. I use this quite a bit now. It's definitely insulated a little bit. This one you can drink out of. Uh, make some lemonade, put it in there, or my favorite, uh, grape Kool-Aid. So you got that, and it's easy to pour into a bottle or just drink out of if you need to. So, so that's a nice little cooler. Another cooler I've got that I just got recently. Got some shopping bags in here. Load up the groceries. This, this is a pretty nice little deal here. And this one works really great just for putting your cold stuff in at the, at the grocery store and keeping it cold long enough to get it home. Not a real thick lining, a little bit of thermal value to that. Uh, this one has a nice little hole in the top where you can get something out without opening the whole thing. That's another kind of cooler. So another kind of cooler I have, um, this is the one I use as a lunchbox going to work. I don't work a lot, I only work three days a week, but here's the cooler I use for that. I like this one, it has some insulation. It's a soft-sided cooler as opposed to a hard-sided cooler. Uh, it works good, it keeps my lunch cold. Big enough now, I can put some other stuff in here. Sometimes I like to bring an iPad to work to look at. Uh, got a nice pocket here, been using this about a year and it's really held up well. This is not the cooler I'm taking out on a desert overlanding or camping trip. I'm gonna get down to some of the, the serious coolers I've got. These two are really good coolers. I used to wonder I would see a cooler that was three, 400 bucks and I thought people were crazy for, for spending that much money on a cooler. Didn't occur to me till I started overlanding that really I understand now why people do that. So I was never really getting out for too many days when I had my van. When I had my van, I was probably getting out for three, four days, usually always kind of near store if I needed to get some more ice I could do that when I take a trip now a lot of times it's very remote and I might be gone for for three four days and not even see a store or anybody else for that matter so now these two are serious coolers the reason I bought these two 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 biggest reasons I picked these two out these two are both made in the USA and they're both IGBC bear resistant IGBC is the interagency grizzly bear committee and they're the group that's in charge of checking products to see if they're rated and bear resistant. When you go out camping in bear country, if you even think you're going to be in bear country, bears are in a lot of places that you don't expect them to be. You definitely want to have an IGBC bear rated cooler or dry storage. And I'll leave a link, a video on dry storage. These two are bear resistant, made in the U.S. It says made in the U.S. right here. And it says bear resistant right here. That's really great. This has a super thick wall. The size of it, pretty heavy. Great handle on it. I can carry this one. So that's a, a real nice cooler. Now my main cooler is this Orca. This, this would sit outside at our campsite for, for hours in the sun. It would always keep the food cold. Very thick top full of insulation, rubber seal. These are the things you're going to look for. You're going to be able to throw this thing around. I've drugged this thing across the ground because you don't have quite as much volume inside. The, the wall is so thick with insulation. Now to make this bear resistant of these padlocks, 
and I'll put them right through these corners. And this is what, so now this cooler is locked up. It's designed to be resistant to four-legged animals like bears, but sometimes you have two-legged animals that mess up your campsite. I guess cooler theft with the, uh, the advent of uh, very, very expensive coolers is, is a thing that happens quite a bit. Now, let me talk about how I pack up my cooler to get ready for a five-day trip in the desert. So the way I cook, I pack up my cooler, a couple days before I can even go on my trip, I will start off by putting a 20-pound bag of ice in my cooler and cooling it for a couple days before I ever think about loading it up for the trip. It gets the cooler nice and chilled out before I even think about putting the food and stuff in it that's going on my trip. You could also put this in a walk-in cooler or a walk-in freezer if you had access to one. That would be ideal. The whole idea is pre-cooling the cooler before you ever use it and the better of a job of pre-cooling it the better cooler is going to work over the long run the second thing I do I freeze everything I can freeze that I'm going to take with me and then everything else is cold so anything that can't be frozen is down to 37 degrees in my refrigerator and anything that's frozen gets down to zero degrees so zero degrees is great it's a lot colder than 32 right so anything that's I can put in here is frozen and then any other thing is already Already pre cooled, and that'll be what I do before I even start thinking about packing this cooler up. Cool the cooler down, cool down or freeze everything that's going in the cooler. And what I've come to do now is I make blocks of ice, I don't really use much cube ice to keep my stuff cold. Once I'm ready to pack up the cooler, I have already made at least two of these. You can make more. I could make three if I wanted to, but two of them has been sufficient on a, on a hot five day trip. I could make three if I wanted to but two of them has been sufficient on a, on a hot five day trip. So this is a seven pound ice mold. It's, it's a silicone ice mold. I put this in my freezer and since my freezer gets down to zero, I'll make one and I only have one of these. I'll make one block, then I'll make another. It takes about a day for them to get solid frozen. So now I'll have two seven pound blocks of ice. And I find that the, the blocks of ice make other parts of loading the cooler a lot better too. So when it comes time to load the cooler, I've got my two blocks of ice, my cooler. I'll dump the ice that I have in my cooler out that's pre-cooling the cooler. Throw this cooler on a hand truck, horizontal hand truck, wheel it into the house by the refrigerator where my wife will be assisting me in loading the cooler. And how we do that is now I've, I've dumped the ice out that's pre-cooled the cooler. I'll open the cooler and we'll first thing we'll put in is the two seven pound blocks of ice that goes in the bottom open it close it and that's the habit you want to get into when you want to make your 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 uh, ice last and food stay cold for a long time open it throw in the ice close it and that's how we do it as we're loading up so the next things that go in all the frozen items are going to go in the bottom all those frozen items are going in the bottom and when you Load your cooler, you want to have a plan. You want to know about where stuff is because you don't want to go in reaching in your cooler to find something and have that cooler open and dig around to try to find what you're looking for. You kind of want to have a plan how you load your cooler. Here's the first day, here's the second day. You know right where to go so your cooler stays closed as much as possible. You want to open this lid for just a very short time. So after we've loaded all the frozen stuff, now the refrigerated stuff goes in. And the same thing, that goes in on top of the frozen stuff and put in there so it's kind of in an order that we can find it. Day one, stuff here. Stuff that we're gonna use maybe several times, that stuff's gonna be near the top. And, and that's how this cooler is gonna get loaded and it's gonna be ready for us to open it, grab what we need, and close the lid. And that's how you're gonna have a lot of success in keeping your food for a long a long time using a cooler. I'm already starting off with a great cooler with a lot of insulation. And when I do these other things, it just really helps out to make this last. And it's nice when you don't you don't get out, you get out and you're not anywhere near where you can get any more ice. You don't have to worry about it. When you do these things, you're fine for several days. Uh, you, you may end up being out there longer than you think just because something happened, a breakdown, and you need to keep your stuff cold longer than you thought you were gonna. So this is a good idea. Even if you're only planning on going out for two, three days, it's not that hard to do. It, it's a good idea to do that just because you never know how long you're going to be out there. Your plans could change. Something could happen. And it's nice to have cold, cold stuff ready to go on your trips.
So now my cooler is all loaded up and what I do is I'll take whatever residual ice I have as far as drinking water ice because we're going to be gone from the house for a while. We're going on a trip. I'll just take all the ice that the ice machine makes and my freezer gets down to zero. All that residual ice I will throw on top of all the other stuff that's already loaded in the cooler. So now I have two of these blocks at the bottom of zero degree ice. I've got a little layer of ice cubes on top that are zero degrees. I'm not buying that ice from the store and using that ice that's not down at zero it's it's a lot of times like you'll see already melting when you're buying it so it, it's not the kind of ice that i want to use to have a great outcome and i won't put so much ice in here that i can't get my stuff that's another thing when you're just dumping a bag of ice in your cooler you end up fighting through that ice to find your stuff and that takes time the cooler is open longer you get more melting so that little layer of ice i'll put on top that's just a little insurance ice because the two blocks by themselves will keep Keep this thing cold. The other thing that you want to do when you're using a cooler is any good cooler or most good coolers will have a drain, right? You'll have a drain somewhere near the bottom of your cooler. Take the let the water out of your cooler every day. Some people will even crack the drain so it, it can drip out and they'll They'll put something under their cooler and hold it up like that. That's a good thing to do too. But you want to get rid of all the water, right? Because the water is going to make the ice melt faster. So you get rid of that water, let that drain out. Keep your cooler tilted with the drain open a little bit or sometimes every morning I'll wake up and I'll just open the drain. I have some idea at some time that maybe something could crawl into the cooler through there and I don't want that to happen. I don't know if that would really happen. I don't take the drain out all the way. Basically what I'm talking about here, start off with a good cooler, cool your cooler down, cool your cool and freeze all the items you're going to put in the cooler. Use some good zero degree ice and I use these because I don't like to have to fight through a bunch of cubed ice. And I'll always have a little bit of those blocks of ice left over after a long trip. Throw a little ice on top. Try to make sure it's the cold, coldest ice you can get. And that's how I get five days of, co of cold food and ice retention on the hottest trips out in the desert, out in the sun. Cooler is handling it, no problem. So why haven't I switched? from a cooler to an electric fridge for overlanding and camping. The electric fridges are awesome. They're definitely awesome if you've got a vehicle set up with a 12 volt power for them. I, I know a lot of people use them. They're great. They set up slides to slide out of the Jeep or to slide out of their trailer if they have it or the back of their pickup. I have a trailer and a Jeep that I could use a fridge in. Uh, it's not really something I want because one reason is I've never heard and I've asked around, I've never heard of a bear resistant 12 volt fridge. Uh, if you you guys know of one anybody here's one leave in the comments down below possibly might reconsider swapping out my cooler for a fridge uh, the cooler works so good at this point I don't really want to spend a, a lot of money like that to, to get a fridge that, that's the second reason fridges cooler cooler a good cooler is expensive uh, there's no doubt about that a fridge and there's a lot of great ones out there they're very expensive too that's another advantage to having the 12 volt cooler they often have a freezer too so you can bring just frozen stuff it stays frozen it does give you a lot of options the other reason i don't get a, a trade my coolers in for a fridge is there's just something else to go wrong a cooler is simple uses ice as long as I pack it up properly. The ice, the food's gonna stay cold for days and days, even in the hottest conditions. That, that is the whole reason why I'm sticking with coolers, high-end coolers, instead of going to a fridge on my camping and overlanding trips. Hope you found the video valuable. I hope you learned something about how to pack up your cooler that's gonna make your, your trips better and more convenient for you. And I will see you on the next video. And don't forget, the best is yet to come.